So the fourth thing to think about when you're putting your presentation together is the concept of nonverbal communication. So when you're practicing your delivery, when you're doing your dress rehearsal, we have to think about nonverbal communications. Now take a look at this picture. What's the message that you get from this gentleman? So this illustrates the idea that our nonverbals are important. When we say one thing and our nonverbals or our body language says something else, people tend to believe the nonverbals. What you just did, you looked at it, the words are correct, the words are very nice, thanks for coming, but you believed what you saw, not the words. And that's so important to remember because a lot of times we practice our content and we've got our message and there's a great story and we've done a dress rehearsal and we've, we've checked everything off that little plan, our, our presentation project plan, and we've forgotten to worry about the nonverbals. And we don't have the same effect. We're not effective, we're not successful at the presentation and we wonder why. So you want to think about your nonverbals. So let's take a look at what that actually means. What are the components of nonverbal communications? We've got eye contact, voice, facial expressions, gestures, posture, and movement. And as a presenter, this is something to think about when you're doing a dress rehearsal. So you can do it in a couple of ways. You can ask a friend. You can phone a friend. You can have a friend in the room during your practice, but it should be a supportive friend not a nitpicky friend who's going to make you feel horrible. A supportive friend who can point out the two or three things you need to work on. You can also do what I'm doing. Bring a video. Have somebody videotape you so you can go home and watch it. And if you really want to learn about your nonverbals, watch it with the sound turned off. Ooh. Watch it with the sound turned off. Once you get over the fact that the camera adds weight and wrinkles and gray hair where well, you didn't even have it in bags and all that, once you get over that, watch it a couple times by yourself, then turn the sound off. Because I learned that years ago. I gave a speech and I thought I was going for passionate, intense face. And somebody pointed out to me and they said, you should watch that tape because you just looked angry. I said, no, I was just being passionate and intense. And they said, no, you weren't. So I went home and I watched the tape. I turned the sound off and by gosh, they were right. I looked angry. I looked mad. I didn't look passionate. So you want to be aware of, you think you're doing something with your facial expressions, but it could be sending a different message. So practicing, videotaping yourself, getting that kind of feedback can help. <clears throat> Things like eye contact, making eye contact with the whole audience, not just one section. Your voice, most of us could speak louder than we do when we're giving presentations. Most people. It's very rare that a presenter is too loud. It happens. But most of us have the opposite problem where we're not loud enough because we don't normally talk that loud or we just don't think it's important or whatever. We're nervous. So you want to make sure your volume's enough so the guys in the back of the room can hear. Now I'm on a mic today, so it's a little easier. But at work, if you don't have a mic, if it's a small conference room, if there's ambient noise, if somebody's got a hearing problem, it's going to be so much harder for them to pay attention if they have to struggle to hear you. So your voice is important. Also how fast you speak, how slow, whether you've got the monotone, so all those components of the voice. Facial expressions we talked about, whether you're smiling or you think you're smiling. Gestures, posture, and movement, we can kind of group that all together into what do you do with your body? Most of us are really good at our heads, right? That's where the knowledge resides. Maybe even not the whole head, maybe just the top part, the brain, right, in the back. But there's this whole other thing, the rest of the body. And if you're delivering a live presentation, or even if you're doing a webinar and you're not on camera, or you're doing a teleconference, those are my favorites, where half the people on the phone are in a different time zone, so it's like 4 o'clock in the morning for them, and the others are at midnight, and you're you know, in the middle, 6 o'clock Eastern time. So you have challenges already. But this whole piece of gestures, posture, and movement comes through, even when they can't see you. Well, how's that work? Well, if you're on a phone call and you're just tired and you're seated and your feet are up on the desk 
and you're not really gesturing and you're not really moving and none of that's happening, what happens? My voice sags, my energy sags. So when I'm on a call or in a room, I stand. I have a mirror so I can see my facial expressions. I use gestures and sometimes they'll say, can you see me gesturing? I'm gesturing. So it's important, why? Because this gives you the visuals that accompany the words. It's like lyrics for a song and the music that goes along. It gives the same message. So if I'm saying we've got growth, can you see the growth? You know, we're covering the whole world with our products. Can you see the globe? It just provides a visual. It helps people register that what you're talking about. So it's important to think about these nonverbals and the bottom line is they have to match the message and it's something that can be practiced so it smoothly is incorporated into your presentation.